So here's my pottery toolkit. This is basically what you'd find in a prehistoric potter's toolkit. You have a paddle, we have some anvils, a piece of leather for smoothing, two basalt blades for trimming rims and things along, along that, and uh, a little gourd scraper to shape the inside, and uh, smoothing stones to uh, screed the surface of the pot as you're working with it. Um, I do use some modern tools. The exception would be to this metal scraper. I really like these. Uh, so this would be the only non, or I guess I, I would say neo-primitive diversion that I would be doing. So without further ado, let's make some pottery. So to start this out, we're just gonna take a little ball of clay, about the size of a closed fist, and we're gonna form it into a, into a disc like a hockey puck, using the contour of our hand here to form it into a nice round shape. And then at that point we're going to flatten it out like a tortilla and then set it over this base mold. And traditionally paddle and anvil pottery utilize the type of base mold feels about right forming a tortilla like this so we're gonna lay this over the mold and center it and at this point I'm gonna wet my paddle here and you know we wet the paddle so it doesn't stick on the clay and we're gonna start from the top and then paddle our way down. And what this is doing is it's spreading the clay down the mold and thinning out the walls too at the same time.
So once we've paddled this clay down onto the mold about halfway, or sometimes less, uh, we're gonna take the series of smoothing stones and we're gonna, just gonna start smoothing out this little bowl here and we're gonna remove all the paddle marks and we're just gonna remove all the imperfections and make it more spherical. So I like to go more or less in a uh, diagonal pattern when I, when I smooth. And uh, this is also pretty advantageous because as I'm smoothing here, you wet your smoothing stone. And what this is doing too is it's pushing the temper inside the clay deeper into the walls and I think it really makes a strong pot. So at this point, once we've taken this little bowl off the mold, we're going to start adding coils on the inside. And you notice that as you roll the coils, you're going to smush them down flat like this. And it's a, it's a good way to get a really thin pot, I, I feel anyway. And it actually pushes the clay outward even more, so I think it stretches your clay even more so. So it's a bit more sustainable for, for uh, clay use. So again, we're going to wet our paddle. And then we're going to take a smooth rock like this. And this is going to be, this is our anvil stone. And how this technology works essentially is you have your paddle and your anvil. And you, you're sticking your paddle inside the, the pot as a type of support for the interior wall. And then on the exterior wall, you're paddling up. So, so two paddles to start out with. And then again, the paddle supports that wall in there. Just slowly thinning this out, incorporate the seams of the old coil and with this new one. So once we've made one round of that, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna make two rounds around the whole perimeter. 
of the rim here. And this is a pretty good methodology that I've used to get really thin pots. So again, so one, two, one, two, one, two. A lot of it is very rhythmic and you tend to get into a pattern after a while. So at this point, we're going to do something a little bit different with our paddle. So wet your tools again, except this time we're going to put our anvil along the inside wall we're going to turn our paddle at around a 45 degree angle. We're going to smack it with a lot more force and you see how that brings up the clay wall really high because clay kind of follows the path of whatever of basically whatever you give it and that's the beauty of clay and so the clay will travel the path of the paddle and since the, the paddle is elongated essentially the clay walls will actually go up quite a bit higher and actually really thin too and we're kind of shimmying the pot along with this paddle too from the inside. So we're just going to come in here and and finish any any things that we need to improve upon. With the shape. Piece of leather down here, it'll add a better stand for this pookie. So we got this thinned out pretty good, but we definitely want it a little bit thinner. So now we're going to take our anvil, we're not going to put it right up against the rim here, we're going to put it down probably about half an inch, right where that coil seam originally was. And then we're going to start just paddling upwards and this is how we're going to start bringing the wall inwards and as you notice it it, it follows the shape of the anvil because the anvil is slightly rounded and that's basically basically kind of what you want so smooth these ends here and we're just going to go around and finish that rotation So once we've built up this first coil, we're going to start going around and scraping it smooth, and this also helps shape the pot as well. So after we've scraped it, we're going to actually make a round of stone smoothing. And this also helps shape it as well and smooth it out.
So don't worry too much about little cracks that'll form because they definitely will. And unfortunately, it's just kind of a part of it. Um, but this clay does have a, this clay that I dig just 20 feet from here, really, um, it, it has a tendency to dry out pretty quickly. And it is a slightly gusty day. So, so after that, so that's basically this, the smoothing process uh, from that point of view. And then now before we add another coil onto this pot to start building it upwards even more, I like to wet, wet my fingers and pinch the rim and even bring that up even more. And this helps, I think, with, um, and this definitely helps with bringing that rim up and, and actually helping uh, in, to integrate a coil on the next, on the next part. And uh, this was actually uh, something that I saw one of my potter friends, Ron Carlos, do. And he pinches the rim a lot before he adds a coil, and I think it's a great idea. So I've implemented it into this. So you see how this is coming in here. So this is basically the repeated process after a, an additional coil has been added. And we notice how the pot walls are really starting to form and start really coming in now. And it's all just repetition, really. Once you get a methodology down of forming this pottery, it really, it really becomes pretty simple after a while and pretty monotonous. But the whole process is quite meditative. It's really beautiful. All right, so that coil is added. Save your clay, put it back in your container.
Okay. So now that our pottery walls are coming more inward, we're actually going to switch to a smaller anvil size. And uh, this is going to help us so we can get into a, a tighter space. So again, same process. We're wetting the, the, the anvil and then we're wetting our paddle as well. So here's our completed pot. And this is very typical of a Prescott culture or Yuman shape. And we're gonna let this sit and dry for about a week. And then we're gonna fire it. <laughs> 